Pacific islands usually invoke images of pristine beaches, leading up to lush forested mountains. Volcanoes and waterfalls often add exotic appeal to the landscape. Our story concerns an island with all of these qualities, but where an additional treasure beneath the surface has been extracted for decades. Gold, a metal which has fascinated humanity for centuries and embellished civilizations from the Mayas to the Egyptians, is also found in Fiji. Unknown to most tourists who visit this small nation of around 800,000 people, the largest island of Fiji, Fiti Lewu, has been home to one of the longest running gold mines in the Asia Pacific region. This is a story about how the extraction of a valued mineral to meet global demand affects the lives of a remote community for better and for worse. What happens when the income that so many have depended on for generations suddenly vanishes? What alternatives remain for such communities once they begin to weigh the various costs of their former lives and their uncertain future? The Vatukola gold deposit lies in the caldera of an ancient extinct volcano in the northwestern corner of Vitilevu. Gold was first discovered here during the British colonial period, and the mine was established in 1935. In the old hotel in the nearby town of Tavua, photographs of the early days of the mine grace the walls. Surprisingly little has changed in the housing for miners that was originally built by the company. Houses have only grown more crowded and sanitation services have been severely damaged. The barracks, as they are affectionately called, were built initially to house male miners. But as experience showed that this was causing major social decay, the company allowed families to move in, but with no extra space. Labor unrest finally led to a strike in 1991 and a protracted legal battle with the company, which was ultimately resolved by the courts in favor of the company based on a technicality. Nevertheless, the strikers, as they still call themselves, hold a daily vigil outside the company even now that the mine has closed. We left our job in, uh, in 1991, 27th uh, 1991, mm -hmm. because of the working conditions, mm -hmm. the salaries, housing conditions, mm -hmm. uh, waters, water is not treated, and uh, because uh, we can uh, set a uh, standard that we are up to the mining down underground. Mm -hmm. We have to work by ourselves. No secondary, like uh, no training miners. Eh? 
Despite their persistence, the remaining strikers were ultimately unable to gain wider support for their cause. The reason for this may lie in Fijian cultural traditions, as explained by Dr. Atu Emerson Bain, the author of an authoritative study of Fijian mining labor. I think one needs to acknowledge the cultural values that are there as well, that are the beautiful aspects of Fijian culture, but the ones that are also make them vulnerable to um, manipulation, to being used uh, and exploited. And those are values that would include um, respect for authority, um, not questioning authority, obedience, uh, trust. Before the discovery of gold, Fiji primarily produced sugarcane, and the British brought thousands of indentured Indian laborers to the island to work the sugar fields. The descendants of this population now constitute about 40% of the population of Fiji and struggle to find their national identity with the indigenous Melanesians, who are also divided amongst numerous traditional allegiances. Resulting political instability has marred much of Fiji's economic potential. Yet the mine has remained a constant for much of this period. That is, until December 5, 2006. Suddenly, and without prior notice, the parent company of the mine, based in Australia and South Africa, decided to close the operation that had run continuously for more than seven decades. It was just a big slap on my face when uh, I was told by the general manager that uh, morning that this mine is completely closed. And uh, in myself, I hide my eye. I really hide my tears when I heard. It really hits. It really hits. And I do hope that this mine is going to be open again. We didn't expect uh, the mine closed. We were there on a day shift one morning, and suddenly someone called out, Hey, the manager is coming. Change your clothes and come here. It was a surprise to hear because, you no. Know, People start thinking of their many things, eh? families, their payment, what they're going to do this, what they have to spend. Eh, that's, it's a surprise to this uh, whole uh, mine. Uh, the closure of the mine has come as a total surprise to us uh, because we, uh, we just took it for granted that the mine is going to be there all the time because this is a mining town, totally dependent on the mine. And we were not given uh, any sort of notice or indication by the company that they are going to close their operations. We've told the uh, general manager of Emperor Gold Mining Company Limited that that's not the way uh, you should be doing things. And he admitted that back in Australia, uh, they're required to give years notice if a mine of that magnitude has to close. And uh, back home, they wouldn't do the same thing. Anxiously awaiting the reopening of the mine, the community begins to ponder their fate and reflect on their lives. Meanwhile, in the capital city of Suva, advocates for the community begin to consider their options and look back at their personal association with the mine. My father used to work in the mines, um, and I was born and brought up in there, uh, born in 1964. Uh, <clears throat> spent uh, most of my childhood days there, went to the local primary school. Uh, up until secondary school, after secondary school, when I left to come to Suva, uh, so talking about the, uh, the most best part of uh, my youth growing up uh, and living in Botkola. Uh, it's, it's an opportunity uh, for us from various different provinces to be all living together in the community. Uh, so there's very strong bonds in there.
Life must go on in Vatukola, despite the tension over their livelihoods. A weekend rugby game provides a welcome relief to the tense town. The game is well played, but is a draw. It seems now to the community that they are also at a status quo, just like the rugby game. There are no winners, yet there are no losers. What might they do if the mine does not reopen? the town in search of other livelihoods. Those who remain have family members commuting elsewhere to work and returning on the weekends when possible. Yeah, no, no, no more job in Batukola. And uh, people from Batukola come and uh, look for the cutting king. No. They can uh, feed uh, the children. One ton is uh, $13 per ton. We cut in uh, half day one ton. I just started my own business as a taxi. We have to wake up uh, five in the morning. Five till six. Because we have to go to Lotoka, then drop, job, job, then come back in the afternoon. Sometimes I go, my kids never wake up. I was getting more at mine. While mine closed, so all the things finished now. People have to go to Lotoka and to look for a job. At a recent community meeting, residents expressed their concerns to the mayor of neighboring Tavua town. There are families who are really suffering. They're living with ten, twenty dollars, which in our Fijian custom, it's it's not a normal way of we 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 accept it because that's what we're getting every week. Um, the concern at the moment is like you highlighted it. Our um, our worry now should be our children, and that's where I'm saying the money is going to now. It's the kids where and uh, their lunch. What we should understand is there are consequences. And when I say con consequences, it's sad because we have family problems. When I say family problems, that's where the father goes and walks somewhere else and he never come back. He's looking after another family now. And their kids, during this, um, this period of time, they are uh, looked after by a different father or a different mother. And that's the consequence I'm talking about. I mean, you can force everybody. Everybody can be staying here and working somewhere else, but we all can do that. What the people need uh, urgently now is the food on the table. I shared uh, uh, some moments with their teachers, and I know what's going on in the schools. They are trying to feed them, but that can only come about if they have the necessary funds to share up. Like their children on day to day. My, my daughters are schooling in Kwanu. They came and they share with me every day. I know what the, the children are going through. Yeah, and I know a lot of people sitting here due to culture. They cannot come up with it. My daughter share with me that a lot of family, uh, children sit standing there when the teacher asks them who hasn't got lunch. They are ashamed to put up their hands. This is what they go through every day. Fortunately for Fiji, there are indeed other options in this region if mining does not restart. However, careful planning will be needed to make these alternative livelihoods work. The infrastructure of many of the settlements has continuously declined over the past several decades. Many of the rainwater tanks no longer work, and some families are forced to procure water from the river, which has been severely impacted by sewage. Pollutants from mine wastes were detected in river water during mining operations. However, more recent testing has revealed an improvement in water quality since the closure of the mine. 
Families are now resorting to subsistence lifestyles, cultivating taro roots and leaves, reviving traditional skills, or fishing from a lake created through the rehabilitation of an old tailing stand. Fortunately, the natural remediation seems to have worked and the lake appears to be relatively healthy. Despite the hardships of the past, the people here want to continue living in Vatikola, and so they are looking for other options. I'm selling um, curry, mixed curry, uh, jura, and all the um, curries, garlic, and uh, salt. Eh? Tourism is often presented as a panacea for such matters on tropical islands. Indeed, the potential does exist for tourism development, even within a post-mining context, in Vatikola itself. I believe that would be a good idea if uh, the tourism industry can uh, put something into that, into Vatikola, so that they can uh, coordinate. For the tourism, I can say it's um, it's a good place for them to see what uh, already happened in the area. Would you be interested in visiting like a heritage mining town to learn about the history and the culture of the area? Yeah, I, th I think yeah. so. Yeah. I don't think there's anything like that around. Yes, um, yes we would. Yeah. It wasn't made public to, to visit or, or anything like that. Only 10 kilometers away from the mine, is the factory of one of Fiji's major industrial brands, Fiji Water. While the plant itself only employs 150 people and is harnessing artesian water, which is thus also not sustainable, the name recognition of this location can help with attracting other investment to the area. Most importantly in this context, the skill set of the miners needs to be adapted to other vocations. I find that as a very skilled workforce, and when you consider the lifetime of gold mines around the world, Watukola is a very long, uh, you know, has had a, uh, been a long time going on. And, uh, and within those years, these skills have been passed on to third generation, uh, fourth generations in some cases. I think there's huge potential for other kinds of livelihood. Uh, uh, for, for the reason is, uh, I think Watukola has got some very good basic infrastructure when considering local, rural infrastructure. Uh, which uh, basic infrastructure like uh, roads, houses, water, electricity, which can attract other alternative uh, industries. And it's important for in the rate of urbanization in Fiji at the moment, uh, a lot of movements, a lot of people with uh, uh, expiring land leases flocking into the cities, uh, squatter settlements, the growth of squatter settlements. It's important for government policy to ensure that those who can stay in rural areas with uh, the sort of infrastructure that is available at Watukola now to develop it further and uh, put in suitable and alternative uh, uh, new industries um, yeah, to ensure that uh, uh, people can uh, stay uh, outside uh, uh, the urban centers and away from the uh, poverty and squalor of squ uh, squatter settlements. Despite the dimming potential of their current jobs, the community remains optimistic that they will be able to rebuild their lives and rise professionally in other vocations. Yet, we are left to wonder why more effective planning for such a project was not implemented to make this transition easier. 
Why were these resilient people who toiled so happily for decades abandoned so quickly? The simple answer to these questions is one of economic expediency. While we cannot blame a company for trying to be profitable, there is an inherent responsibility that comes with any such enterprise. Mining can certainly work to everyone's benefit more effectively if such responsibility is taken seriously by corporations and governments. Over the, say, the last five to ten years, you know, we, the mineral industry has contributed, say on average, uh, one to 1.5 percent to GDP. And uh, well, as if you might have guessed, the, with the closure of Otukola, that basically <laughs> has gone down to zero. Basically, the government, well, MRD for that matter, has uh, been uh, very much committed to uh, uh, making sure that the mineral industry attains a stable footing, sort of thing, in the, the country's uh, uh, economic. So, what has happened is that there has been a couple of st uh, strategies adopted to make sure that we achieve those objectives. And I think uh, just a couple of them, uh, one and uh, probably the, the most uh, important one is uh, promoting the minerals and exploration industry in Fiji on the international market, uh, virtually updating our current uh, legislation so that we keep in uh, line with the international practices. We now have a uh, mineral exploration and exploitation bill. The third one, most important one is uh, updating our environmental act as well to make sure that the industry uh, uh, works in a more environmentally friendly manner. I study about the environment in school and I learned something about uh, how useful the environment to us. Right now if we go to Botokola, I think we should be careful because you know the environment, the habitats are being disturbed. There is a, a good uh, lesson that I learned during the close of Vatukula. First of all, if this mine reopens again, we have to set a goal. Set a goal. Every individual miner set a goal for himself. How many years is he going to work in Vatukula? Eh? And uh, their children to be brought up, educate the children properly so that can, they can be, uh, they can have a good job and a better citizen and uh, secondly, they have to keep more money. They have to keep more money just in case to support you when this uh, bad time of the year comes in. In Fiji, we, uh, we have a very strong link in our customs and our culture. And uh, saying that, uh, uh, I say if, uh, if someone tells us uh, to do something, um, without, even if the wages are poor or even for nothing, if the words are uh, said in a proper tone and a proper manner, we can move mountains to do those, or th those things or whatever our employer wants. We can do that.
Sem boa andar, bonita é lá. 